Hey, hey, this is Tiger. Welcome to the stream again. And actually, I almost managed to get the disclaimer visible. If you click before the focus intro runs out, you see a little bit of a disclaimer. But it vanished again. And we are in the game. So, again, the disclaimer from my side. Please don't forget that we are talking about playing a computer game and leave the real railway installations and trains to the professionals. Where's my AJ? Yes, AJ and CD Radar says yay, trains in World 4 and he's actually in the chat before AJ. That's the first time that this happened ever. So hey CD Radar, hey AJ, thank you both for moderating this stream. And I appreciate you being here, CD Radar, since you said that you're not interested in American stuff, because we are doing American stuff. Today we are going back to the Antelope Valley line, running it uh, home, more or less, home to LA Union Station, and have a look at the signaling system that the South California Regional Rail Authority uses on the Metrolink lines so i can turn on the antelope valley yeah rub it in that you were late aj that's something that has never happened before i decided since i did not really have enough time you're applying you're playing while stream yeah that's it that is a good thing i I'm, i usually do that when I'm watching streams of DTG or whoever. So this is a good thing to have the stream running while you're playing. What I was trying to say is that I did not really have a lot of time to pick a service and uh, see what service um, generates good signaling constellations. So I just thought when we're running into LA, we we're getting more signaling as compared to running towards Lancaster through the desert. This is why we're going home. On the last uh, Antelope Valley stream, we went from LA Union Station to Vista Canyon. And now we're going home. We're not starting in Vista Canyon, but some, 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 some stops closer to LA, actually. Let's just jump in and had, let's have a look at the cab of the cab car. So we're going reverse, the train is not turning around, so we're driving it back from the cab car. I play this Vectron all the time, it is so good, I can even... So a CD Radar is enjoying the Vectron. That is nice. I'm looking forward to playing the Vectron more. The, the thing is, if you if you get a, a package like Train Sim World 4 with the deluxe edition you get so much content it is almost overload because you cannot really dig into everything and if you just run through it then it is not the real deal so before starting this service for real i wanted to have a bit of a closer look to this cab here we're sitting in the upper level up of the last car obviously so this is us this is our position and we're sitting in this in this Hyundai double decker car and driving the train from here, remote controlling the locomotive that is at the other end, making a lot of noise. And um, there are some interesting features about this thing. The first thing is we do not have an independent brake here, although we cannot control the independent brake from here. We have to make due with the automatic brake that we have here. Then never forget that we have to operate the cap setup switch so that we are that we are telling the train that we are using this switch in the introduction that I played this afternoon. They tell us to turn on the generator field switch first and then the cap uh, setup switch. But if we do that, the annoying driver assist reminds us that we should use the cap cap setup switch first. Well, whatever. Dim lights, bright orcs. We're sitting here with bright orcs in the station. Not quite sure if that is what we would do. Maybe in the station we should rather dim it. What other have we here? We have a TMS reset. That is the train management system. You might 
remember this train management system stuff with this funny diagonally flashing uh, squares from the peninsula corridor uh, line from the baby bullet locomotive and uh, the cap car associated with it it did not work then on the cap car to the baby bullet you could um, initiate a self-test sequence of the system but I have not been able to find any reliable information about how this worked it must be a older system it has a switch here to turn it on and off doesn't really do a lot we have the PTC switch here for the positive train control and it is on by default what is rare that the safety system is switched on but on the other hand it does not do a lot then we have the automatic train stop that is on as well by default that has an acknowledge button here so this is obviously a system that generates some kinds of alarms that need to be acknowledged but I don't know if they are doing anything in the game but let's turn it on anyway we will see if anything happens, if not, then it is not bad anyway. This is where we fit in our reverser. We have a horn sequencer that is quite sweet because it plays the 14L sequence. And um, we don't have to do it ourselves when we're approaching a level crossing. Important things are the brake dials here so that we can see the status of our brake system. The speed clock is a bit hidden behind the brake lever and the brake valve, right? So we can see it. Maybe we can see it better if we are able to adjust the seat height. Well, I'm afraid we cannot adjust the seat height. So we have to live with this. We have to go by this speed clock even if it is partially hidden by the brake handle and the brake valve casing. This thing tells us whether we are applying traction or we are applying uh, dynamic brakes. If the needle goes into the red, then we are applying too much traction and straining the engine. This is a panel with some indicators that we can use. The number lights can be turned on here. The ATS cutout switch is here and some other things the PCS uh, indicator is here in case we go into an emergency door interlock bypass uh, this bypass for zero speed bypass I am not entirely sure what this does or is supposed to do in real life I think that's it there is the emergency brake valve to open the brake pipe from this end and this is more or less what we have and what we have to use. Doors closed icon we have, a wheel slip indicator. This should light up with the ATS, the automatic train stop. Demands and acknowledge. That would be that button here. Then we have the TMS acknowledge. This must be some 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 kind of a seat. TC, a centralized traffic management system, more or less. But I have no idea. Maybe we will find out more about this at some point in time. The brakes need to be cut in here. This is another thing that we need to do, otherwise the train, train won't roll. Yes, I guess. We just restart the service and do that for real. What you might have noticed is that we do not have an alerter on this cap. Don't know if this is part of typical, most probably, because otherwise there should at least be a switch or um, fuse for it. So maybe this is why we cannot get a platinum metal, because we cannot turn on the alerter here. So the first thing that I want to do is the cap setup switch. That one. The lights, I wanted to have only a dim here in the station. The brakes need to be cut in. Oh, the doors obviously need to be unlocked. And then I wanted to turn on the TMS as well. Maybe it does something in terms of allowing us to get more points because we turned on all the safety systems. Closing the doors. Again, quite short time for the setup. I 
good thing we're on a passenger service train so we can release the brake by increments yes we're getting traction release the brakes completely Another thing concerning the horn, the horn sequence, I will just activate it right now. In case you're looking for the keyboard shortcut for the horn sequencer, it sits on the horn 2 slot. So typically you have horn 1 and horn 2 for a low and high tone. What is it with the speed? Oh, we're limited to 45, so I should not go beyond that. And um, space was horn 1 and N key was uh, horn 2. If you play on PC, is there another? No, this is not another one. And uh, if you look at the settings and the slots for the keyboard control... You will find the slots for horn 1 and horn 2. And there's horn 1 decrease, horn 2 decrease, I'm not quite entirely sure what this means. I already um, readjusted it so that horn 2 is N again. In by default setting it is different, so it is horn 2 is no longer on N, but I think on shift space or shift control or something like this so if you want to have your high tone back on the n key then you have to adjust it here and the sequencer is horn 2 so that works what did not work to adjust when we're talking about this uh, keyboard settings actually is um, yeah i might want to show you when we're running there are those switches here for fuel pump generator field and engine run and those are we going slower yeah but only if we are up the hill and now they are connected with the insert home and scroll upwards keys what well, is a bit annoying because i use those keys for my lighting setup oh this Whistleboard was facing the other way around, wasn't it? So if I use those keys, I can cut out the fuel pump, engine run, and generator field. Obviously, this does not work so great on the locomotive because we are losing traction if we do that. Now I think I have to slow down a bit for the. 30 reduction here okay that we did and if we look back into this option setting um, where we controls keyboard is that we find a slot for the engine run that is on the insert key, increase and toggle, but I have not been able to assign something new to it, like I wanted to assign maybe number four, confirm key bind, it doesn't change. So I have not been able to change it for engine run, and the other thing, I think, uh, generator field is somewhere as well, e.g. Generator field there is, but where is fuel pump? I did not find it. It is obviously missing or hidden somewhere else. So those thingies with all the additional keyboard controls well, is a super great thing that we have it in the game now. 
but it needs to be looked at again, I think. Okay, but back to driving the train. See, I'm fanning about with the throttle to get a feel for how the train is reacting to my input. Need to be down at 30 at any minute. Maybe at the signal or wherever, or when we're going across the switch. No, at the signal. Now we're going through the tunnel. And we're actually already out of the Antelope Valley. What more or less starts where we started the service, but in the other direction. Now we're going back into the area around the uh, Sun Valley Freeway, I think it is called, or Golden State. No, it's Golden State Freeway. We have to stop at Silmar San Fernando. So far the game is running much smoother than it ran last time, no AJ? Let's hope it stays that way. It's only the tunnel but still. Even before. Interesting quirk is that the white hand on the left brake dial is illuminated, the white hand of the right brake dial is not. Here. Should be just the same like this one, isn't. So for the use of the brakes, when it just comes to holding the train in the descent and slowing down small increments, I would just use the dynamic brake here on the power brake handle. And for actually slowing down the train, I would use the brake handle on the right side and rely on the system blending in the train brakes, the air brakes automatically. Was that an alarm that came from the TMS system? So is the TMS our alerter? Or does it work at least like an alerter here? That was interesting. Maybe I should not use any controls and see what happens. Speed increase to 35, but not before the whole train has passed. How long are we, by the way? 140 yards. That calls for some brake effort. Maybe now we're good. Now we're good. We go to 35. Ah, I forgot that the, the HUD actually tells me the speed limit.
I was speeding, wasn't I? Because I only got 35. Oh, maybe I'm only getting 35 points because it does not recognize that the safety systems are on. And this is the thing that they mentioned, that you cannot achieve platinum because of the way the, sa the safety system works here. Yeah, we're only getting 35 for being under speed limit. Speed limit increases to 45. There wasn't actually a level crossing, there was just a shadow. Now we use the horn in vain. Speed limit is 60, but it will go back to 45 again, so there is not really a point in accelerating. So it's the radar, in spite of you not liking American stuff, I think I enjoy this route really a lot but I also enjoyed the peninsula corridor even though there were so many quirks and stuff on that route Approach signal, so we will have to slow down to stop at the next signal. But that means we have to slow down to 40 as soon as possible and prepare to stop at the next signal. But that is probably when we have to stop at the station anyway. CD radar is not taking it from me. He does not like the American stuff. I do. But I'm old-fashioned in this way, I like stuff if it is good, no matter if it is American or from the UK or German, Austrian, Swiss, French or whatever you have. So unfortunately we will be late.
But this is because we drove a bit on the safe side all the way, keeping way below speed limits. Now approaching the station, barber pole is at half. Maybe reduce it to 100 and see if this works or to 90. Make a 20 pound reduction. Okay, using the sequence here doesn't make a lot of sense if you have to stop at the station anyway. So this is the point where I would activate. So where actually did we end up? Well, we hit the station platform at least. So maybe we have to drive a bit more to the front, so not be so late. There is 60, then it will go even higher. We have to go to Sun Valley. Badly timed 14L. So we can accelerate properly here. Three level crossings. Would that be a seventy five later? Okay. A lot of level crossings.
the sequence are more or less running incessantly. So when we're traveling with 75 or faster then we do not really... Oh, what am I doing here? Then the sequence is too slow, that's what I meant to say. So it would be great to know where the station is. The clear signal we got. Because I guess it will be quite hard to slow down in the descent from 79 miles within one kilometer. Does it say? Well, it's 1.5 miles. We probably should start slowing down. It actually does not look like it's blending in. No, no, it's blending in the air brakes. Did I not see the station coming earlier? I totally ran it now. But the barber pole is... Well... That was maybe just me getting confused here. Judging by the barber pool, I thought we had still much more distance to stop here. That is obviously not where the train was supposed to end up, huh? But at least we made up some time. Burbank Airport North will be next. Oh, that is too much. 
really deep in the red. See how far we are away? No, we cannot. Judging by the time, it cannot be that far. Okay. For this train, the barber pole is really, 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 really too late so that you can go by, so you need to know the route. Otherwise, you will always be too late for stopping at the stations. In the slower speed area, this will not be that bad. But in Sunny Valley here, I need to learn the route. But we're back on time at least. Well, then maybe this is... Ooh, where does this camera go? Then maybe this is, this is actually the right moment for the presentation and the signaling system that applies to that route here. AJ says, so it is just me or does the stream title still say yesterday's stream? Oh yeah, it is so. Why does the, the stream title in... Um, Twitch not follow the schedule. It is not Austrian signaling, it is Metrolink signaling. In Vorarlberg, that would be great. In Stockholm, California. So, AJ, happy now? Then I can actually do what I am supposed to do and talk about the signaling system that runs on the Metrolink line SCRRA South California Regional Rail Authority and um, the signaling system is a route signaling and quite close or quite familiar with or to the Union Pacific route signaling um, it is Sunday but otherwise good true Sunday. Let me change that to Sunday. Everything is automated in this world, but the stream title does not follow the schedule. Anyway, back to our signaling system. We know that according to the Code of Federal Regulations, we have a small framework that we have to obey with every signaling system that every railroad carrier in the United States um, has to has to establish in their rules of operation and for that we 
<laughs> have my custom built um, frame where we can uh, put all the signals that are in the system in a certain matrix to better understand them and um, not confuse them with other signaling systems. So we're doing SCRRA, Southern California or South California Regional Rail Authority, and obviously passenger timings. The red signal means stop. That is a requirement from the Code of Federal Regulations, just as the green signal topmost even if it is on top of nothing or on top of dark signal or on top of red signals, everything is, does not matter if it is the green on top and red, black or nothing underneath it is green. You can go by the authorized line speed that comes from the Code of Federal Regulations. What is um, a thing that always comes in route signaling as opposed to speed signaling? If the green is not on top, but on the second position, be it two signals or be it one signal, if it is not on top, then it tells you that you are diverging from the straight line into a diverging route. So this is the diverging variant. So this would be clear. This would be diverging clear, telling you that you are going over the switch. You don't know how fast you can go over the switch. You have to read this up in your timetable so that you know to what speed you have to stick. This is why it is a route signaling and not a speed signaling system. You can get the green on the lowest of three signal heads. That is the same signal. It also tells you that you are diverging. Whether it is di telling you that you are diverging only at the second position after the signal would be a, 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 an interesting twist, but I was not able to um, confirm that it is like this. So in the signaling rules, that I found in a timetable number seven from April 7, 2010 and cross-checked it with the um, interpretation that Joseph Hovitt gives on his website that is typically totally reliable, um, then it is the totally the same aspect, whether it is in the middle or in the lowest one of three, if you actually have three heads. Also from the Code of Federal Regulations, the yellow on top means it is an approach signal. You have to prepare to stop at the next signal. Um, and typically this is associated with some speed that you have to uh, target. And in this signaling system, when passing an approach signal, you have to slow down to 40 as soon as possible. If you have a dead signal, a black signal on top of the yellow one, it is also an approach signal. That is not always self-explanatory because sometimes the black one would be like a red one or whatever but you can just ignore a black signal on top of the yellow signal it is an approach the yellow one is the topmost in this context the approach can come in the diverging variant just like the clear can come in the approaching uh, in, in the diverging variant then you have a diverging approach telling you that you are diverging you have to check your timetable for the time that you can go over the switch and have to prepare to stop at the next signal after you diverged across the switch and at the same time so this is the same you have to slow down to 40 as soon as possible and just like with the diverging clear it can be on the lowest on th of three signal hats telling you that it is a diverging approach so this is sometimes confusing because in speed signaling systems this can be a slow approach and uh, this can be sometimes read as a medium approach or, or something like this or even as a restricted signal with the yellow one on the bottom most but um, in a this signaling system that is a root signaling system this is only telling you that you are diverging and then it has the regular um uh, the regular meaning of that you have to slow down and be prepared to stop at the next signal what is probably a rare one we have the advance in front of the approach so the typical sequence when you are approaching a red signal will be the advanced approach flashing yellow on top then the solid yellow on top and then the red one 
you have to be prepared to stop, uh, not to stop, to have to, to slow down to 40 at the next signal. So this prepares or, or corresponds with that one here. At this signal, you do not have to slow down to a certain speed yet, but be prepared to slow down to 40 or not pass the next signal with more than 40 so that you actually are at the 40 that you should be under when you're passing the approach signal. Again, just like here, we have the variant with the diverging. If we move it down one or two um, signal heads, flashing yellow tells you you are diverging and that you are approaching an approach signal so that the next signal will be approach and the second next signal will be a red one. So same ruling principle here, moving it downwards, it is for the diverging line and flashing solid red. That is the idea. If you get two yellows on top of each other, solid ones, then this is actually a signal that tells you the next signal will be a diverging one. It can be a diverging clear, but I'm not entirely sure about the context and the sequences that I used. I haven't played the game enough to see what it is used in the game. Um, maybe it also can uh, tell you that you are approaching maybe a signal of that kind. Uh, but what takes precedence if you are approaching a signal of that kind, diverging approach, if you then get the advanced approach or the um, the the approach diverging signal for that, I can't know. I, I, I didn't find any sources on that and I have not seen what it is done in the game. But you see the idea, the two yellow ones tell you you are diverging after the next signal. What we do not have, we have in the Union Pacific uh, system, is a um, diverging approach, diverging, telling you you are diverging now and you have to prepare for diverging again afterwards. That will be the red over yellow over yellow one. It is not defined in that system, but it is in the Union Pacific system. What it also exists in the Union Pacific system is this, what we would in a speed signaling system read as an approach limited, the flashing green under the solid yellow. It is called an approach 60 here and it tells you that you have to prepare to pass the next signal, whatever it may be, with no more than 60. And the corresponding one is an approach 50 where the same happens with 50 and the green is not flashing. So that we would typically read in a speed signaling system as an approach medium, approach limited. It is here an approach 50, approach 60, or is some kind of a speed signaling element in this root signaling system. I have not seen those signals in the game in a root signaling system yet. I'm not entirely sure in what contexts they are used, but they are also defined in the Union Pacific a root signaling system where they also have a diverging variant of that, I think. And uh, what we do not have here, this is where this line here stays empty. Uh, what we have in the Union Pacific system is a diverging clear 40 or something like this. I forgot the exact name of that the signal. It doesn't exist here. What exists, because we need it, according to the Code of Federal Regulation, is uh, restricted. And we have both variants of the restricted. Uh, we sometimes see we have the flashing red. Does not matter in what position. If one of the red lights on the signal is flashing, then it is in a restricted signal or restricting signal that allow, or allows you only to go restricted speed when passing this signal. We have seen that on the Caltrain rules. Um, video, for example, they have those flashing reds as well. And they also use the Luna White that is also mentioned in the Code of Federal Regulations as a signal that tells you to slow down and prepare to stop. And if in any position the signal has a Luna White, then it is a restricted or restricting speed signal. Also, that is a bit of a special one, red light with a number plate and the G indicator for typically grade. This is also not a signal where you have to stop, but what tells you to go with restricted speed. Restricted speed is maximum 20, but you always have to prepare to stop on half your side. So if there is a train coming from the other direction or broken rail or whatever. So that is the typical driving on half side rule for the restricted. 
there are defined signals that tell you that you're approaching a restricted or restricting a signal that is like always with approach the yellow on top and then underneath telling you what you are approaching either the lunar or the flashing red just like the lunar and the flashing red here for the definite restricting a signal here the approach variant i have never seen those signals i'm not sure if they are actually used sometimes on some lines you can find that um, a restricting signal is just preceded by a normal approach so that you have to prepare to stop and then you see okay it is a restricted speed signal a restricting signal then you can just go on without stopping so many many signaling sequences don't really use the approach restricted signal or approach restricting signal but use a normal approach in that context and obviously this tells you to slow down to 40 as well just like the normal approach signal would then we have this signal that is between the stop and the restricting signal that is sometimes called a stop and proceed. Here it is a, rest a restricted proceed that according to the rules, if I read this correctly, requires you to stop in front of the signal and then even without contacting the signal, you can go on but with restricted speed. Those are the red ones with the number plate. Yeah, the next thing that we can talk about, because we already have captured all the um, wayside signal, the stand-up signal, the high ones, um, there are also dwarf signals. Dwarf signals can sometimes be quite confusing. Um, if you think back of, uh, of the NORAC system, for example, the dwarf signal aspects are sometimes totally different from, from the from the uh, high signals that you can see in this signaling system the dwarf signals are actually super easy to remember because they are more or less the topmost or the two topmost signal heads from the high signal so what points to the direction that we actually do not need a third signal head in the signaling system so red as a single one or red over red is obviously the stop signal here if one of them flashes, it is the restricting signal, just as the lunar white on the dwarf. And then if we have the red one with the number plate and the G, that will be the dwarf version of this one. It's just arranged the other way around. The G plague and the number plague are above the red lamp. The clear signal will be the green, obviously, or the green over red. Or I have put it here usually I always just tell a signal that is dark is just like a signal that is red in this context I just put it here for clarity so the green over a dark signal will be just like only a green it is clear signal if it is on dwarf that allows you to go with maximum authorized speed whereas if we turn it around and we have the red over the green so the green on the second position it is just like the upper version here or the small version when cutting or using the two upper heads of this signal when we have a diverging clear. Same here, approach, if it's only a one yellow light it is approach, if the yellow is on top of red or on top of a dark signal, or even a dark signal underneath the red, that will be more or less like the single um, yellow here. <clears throat> then it is an approach if the red is over the yellow then we have that one here then we have a diverging approach in dwarf version and the same here with the flashing yellow and the flashing yellow under the red one so you see this is easy also here we take the two upper heads and just use them as a dwarf signal and if we put a number plate on the red ones then we have the restricted proceed otherwise known as the stop and proceed signal diverging approach uh, uh, no uh, other way around approach diverging will be yellow over yellow and here the same yellow over flashing green and yellow over steady green so the dwarf signals in this system are really easy you just always have to imagine them as a stand-up signal maybe with a red one underneath and then you got your aspect yeah i guess that's it that's it for the presentation today. Where did my OBS go? <clears throat> so, excuse me.
and then we can go back to the game and drive our train home so you can see or you can hear in my voice because i'm going down almost an octave with my voice i have something in my throat something that the horses i think this morning um kicked into the air and i picked it up with my throat So let's see if we can get a feel for driving this train here. Hello, check the Discord. Nice to have you on the stream. Burbank downtown is the next stop. And we are running into some fog and an advanced approach signal. Advanced approach, as we have learned just before. We can go line speed, but we need to be prepared to approach the next signal with no more than 40. For that it would be good to know where the next signal is. Since I'm playing this route for the first time, I haven't the faintest. Don't know if those signals that we are approaching here are the next signal for us. Probably not. Probably. But they are. Okay? We got yellow over yellow. That is an approach diverging. We can see that there is a speed limit probably connected with the diverging switch that we are approaching now. This is why they told us to slow down to 40 at the next signal. Obviously I was much too late for that, but nevertheless I can do it now and at least be... What will be the limit? It will be 40. Well, 45 first and then 40. Still going down, but for holding I can use the use the brake. So <clears throat> What we saw was the sequence advance approach and then the next one was not an approach but uh, approach diverging. So do we still have to prepare for stopping at the next signal? Probably not, otherwise we would have gotten a diverging approach. Now we're getting the diverging clear. So we don't have to prepare for stopping at the next signal. So if that is a correct sequence then we can get the advance approach just to be ready to slow down to 40 at the next signal. This time at least I'm not overshooting the station so badly because I had to slow down for the switch anyway. After that we can go back to 79 line speed. And now we're actually a bit slow. The experience of overshooting everything stuck with me.
So, where is the stop position here? There it is. Spot. Is that our stop marker here? Where it says... Spot cap. Maybe that is the stop marker. I, at least I will try to aim for that one. Knowing that the game not necessarily always puts the stop markers where the real stop markers would be. another level crossing here, right? And we can get the train to speed. Will there be a reduction? No, we're just running with 79. Why always 79? 79 is the fastest speed that a train without a positive train control system can go. Next, next stop is already Glendale. So we're almost at home. We actually have quite a stiff gradient everywhere. Okay, here was the level crossing. Advanced approach tells us to slow down to 40 at the next signal or for the next signal and there are many many level crossings but I'm not seeing any whistle boards anymore. So I can use the dynamic brake in addition to the air brake, not necessarily blending it in or waiting for it to be blended in. At least that's what it seems like. <coughs> and the horn sequencer does not activate the bell, obviously, so I have to activate the bell independently. Interesting that I just realized that. Now I slowed down to 40 for the next signal. But obviously the problem is that we never know where the next signal is. For that we would usually have our IETMS system running here on this monitor. 
then we can definitely see where the next signal is or we have um, would have our root knowledge and they wouldn't send someone like me who has never traveled this route before to be prepared be late obviously there are signals coming up and it's an approach if I see that correctly Now it's good that we're back to 40 because at the next signal we're supposed to stop. I hope it is not the signal that we are seeing here. No. Now it's actually one for the opposite direction. But you see, AJ, I'm still traumatized by spatting out on Cajon Pass a year ago when I did not know where the signals were when running the route for the first time and running in the fog. Yeah. Now at least we got the barber pole telling us that we have to stop at Glendale soon. Yeah, but it's really interesting. We can mix oops all of a sudden the fog vanished we can mix in the dynamic break at will we don't have to wait for the loco to do the blending did we already miss the stop marker looks a bit like it Where is the stop marker? Let's see and check this for the next. 4 the next run, if there is one. Yes, here it is. Spot cap. This is where we should have stopped. Because that is really a long platform. Glendale here. Well, for the next run, I know where I have to stop. Yes, driver assist. I'm not applying power, I'm just releasing the brakes. Still 79 that we can go. And next stop is already the last one in LA Union Station. By the way, we did not really get to a signal, right? So we are really we are still running under 
under approach that does not get relieved by the station stop. And we do not have a driver's reminder appliance like on a British train that we had to push and activate in a situation like this so that we don't forget that we are still under caution. So instead of accelerating to the 79, I will have to stay under the 40 until we actually pass a signal that allows us to go faster. And there are signals now, so as I am told, I'm preparing to stop here. As long as we see that the signal is actually at the better position and it is at the clear. So we can stop the braking. and accelerate in this time to the 60 later we will be there is a little section with 40 because before we go into the 50 but well now we can go 60 Still running downhill. That is not a whistleboard, that was just a mile post. Aha. Uh -huh. I missed the signal telling us that we have to slow down to 40. And here, obviously, the switch is bleeding in. You can see this little uh, amount or little length of track for 40. It is bleeding in, even though we are not going through the switch, and even though the limit is 50 starting at the switch, we have to go underneath the 40 to not speed at this point. So, even in Train Sim World 4, we still have those in-bleeds. And from what we have seen from the editor, this obviously has to do with placing the markers for the speed limit. Or will it, it will go down to, what is it, 25 then at some point? Good. Rain bush here. So it seems like we're getting more and more stutters the longer the game is actually running.
That was very red, but not for us. Here's our clear. Did you hear how the sound changed underneath the bridge? So the 25 is announced now. In about half a mile the limit will start. Here is a whistle board, and we're going 25, we don't need to start whistling that early. At least we made the 25 limit, and then there will be a limit. Ah, that was the limit to 12. A weird limit to 12 at the station. Probably. A limit of 10 was too slow for LA. So they limited it to 12. Will there be a speed board? Or do we have to divine that for ourselves? Probably have to divine it for ourselves. Where the limit starts. There might be a signal for us as well, we're not seeing it because of this tiny window that we have. But it cannot be a red one because we did not get an approach before that and now we are getting our approach signal. No, it's an advanced approach actually. Let's see if we can find out where this speed limit of 12 actually starts. Those signals are not for us, those are the exit signals. Here's the approach. Probably here at the signal bridge we are. Yes. This is where the limit starts. The limit to 12. Now I probably overbraked it. 
because I didn't want to be too fast. Now we have to coast into stopping position. In our Hyundai Roten cap car. But what is really interesting to know is that you can add dynamic brake with the power brake handle even when you're activating the train brakes. So we have a flashing red on the dwarf that means restricted or restricting so we may pass it. Obviously driving on half side not faster than 20. I think we can do that. Excuse me, the CD radar. What are you saying? What do you want me to excuse you for? Fishing what? Rather tell me where the stop marker here is on this station here. Did I say anything about fishing? the next track there is a stop marker well probably we should not run into this buffer block that will probably not be the best of ideas so well even though we did not have the safety systems on and get a zero for it. And even though the accuracy and the on-time bonus is low, we are getting a platinum medal. So the threshold for platinum medals is not really so super high, is it? So I thought this would be something that is a bit challenging in this game. Well, we managed to go there without speeding, what is good. And this is obviously what they said in this one post, that because of the way that the safety system works, we cannot get the bonus for the safety systems, but we are not getting a bonus for it anyway, because it always says NA on the other one, and here it says zero. So the best we can get is zero or NA. Anyway, whatever, we got the platinum metal on this, on the first run, not knowing anything. This one actually doesn't count as speeding. It's interesting here, see? This is where the 40 in-bleed was. Um, before we got into the 50. But this did not count as speeding. Maybe they are cutting out super little episodes of speeding. Now we should make a screenshot of that. Interesting. So there is still a lot to learn about how this new game works. And, uh, well, mm. I will definitely ha will, will practice driving this train, I promise. 
and dealing better with the brakes and the stopping positions and then probably we will have a better experience getting this train to stop in the proper place for now I guess this is the end of the stream we're ending this at Los Angeles Union Station that's the name I think does this look busy enough for LA well at least they made a, a great effort I think and I like the design of this train it looks special a bit like a hippopotamus doesn't it <laughs> alright that's it for today thank you very much um, I will be back next Sunday latest maybe sometime in between and I will try to adjust my steam text accordingly thank you CD Radar for uh, moderating thank you AJ for moderating have a good time take care bye bye